arrogance, intransigence, uh, and no shift and no give from Brussels at all. I hope I'm wrong, but I just think these people, particularly the Junkers and the Barney, as the unelected European Commission, they are bigger, stronger, more powerful than national governments, than electorates. Uh, and I, I suspect what you're going to get this afternoon is the British public becoming even more angry about the way these negotiations are being handled. Well, let's uh, put those sentiments to journalist and political commentator Ian Dale. He joins us now from uh, London. Morning to you, Mr Dale. Uh, I don't know if you could hear there what Nigel Farage was say saying, but essentially arrogance, intransigence from the EU side is what he's expected. Uh, expecting, he calls the EU uh, unelected officials, saying they have more power uh, than national governments. Do you agree with that? I do, 100%. I think he's absolutely right. We've seen arrogance over the last two years from the Commission, and I suspect that will continue. I didn't expect them to say anything else that they, than they did yesterday, and I think they will go on. This will go right up to the 59th minute of the last hour. And um, I think the British government have got to hold their nerve in this for once, because their negotiating stance so far has been an absolute shambles. So I hope they've learned from experience. If it does go to the 59th uh, minute, isn't that really the UK's fault for having delayed, not being prevaricated, not being able to come up with any sort of consensus? You might say that the EU actually is just being a smart, united uh, negotiator, whilst the UK seems to be fracturing all over the place politically. Now, if the EU is not going to budge uh, on the backstop, which it says it will not, is there any point with Theresa May coming up with alternative solutions? Can she do that? Well, it depends what the alternative solutions are. Um, I suspect that one of the alternative solutions could be a sunset clause into the backstop. Now, the EU says it's impossible to reopen the withdrawal agreement. Of course, it's not impossible. If you want to do something, you can do so. It's not complicated to do that. Um, I see no willingness at the moment. But then you hear uh, conversations happening behind the scenes between national governments and the European Commission, the Polish government, for example. Uh, they think that, that there ought to be some flexibility. I think that that view is probably shared by many people in the German government too. So we'll see. I don't expect any movement on the European Commission in the next two weeks, um, but I think there may well be before March the 29th. I mean, isn't there a problem that even if the EU said, all right, fine, we'll, we'll, open the, we'll, we'll reopen the withdrawal agreement, there is no workable solution at the moment to the problem in Ireland, the border problem in Ireland, which is at once trying to not have that hard border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, whilst also allowing uh, the UK, which voted to leave the EU, to withdraw itself from EU customs arrangements. That doesn't seem to be possible, does it? Well, it is possible if there's a will on both sides. And I think that one of the solutions, I mean, look, all three sides in this negotiation, the Irish government, the European Commission and the British government, all of them say they will not erect a hard border. So that's a fairly united standing starting point for this. And that's where they ought to go from. Now, we know because Michel Barnier has admitted it. I don't think he did mean to admit it, but last week he admitted that there are technological solutions. You don't have to check things on the border. Things have been checked away from the border. Um, so I think there are but, solutions But that's, here. isn't that just, uh, well, just, just a sec, just, No, just a second. Also, um, it, it shouldn't take more than a couple of years to negotiate a free trade agreement with the EU. We already have a free trade agreement with the EU. So therefore, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're just deciding which parts of it are not going to apply in the future. So I think some sort of time limited backstop ought to be workable. Make it three, make it, make it four, make it five years. I don't mind which. But if, if we haven't really got a free trade agreement within five years, that shows a lack of willingness on one of the sides. And I think you can guess which one I think Well, I'm, I mean, in the I'm last few, few days, legal experts have come out saying that actually under WTO uh, rules, it could take seven, up to seven years uh, for it's absolute uh, rubbish. the UK no, to be able to operate no, with no, free no, no, frictionless no. trade. No. No, Australia negotiated a free trade agreement with the United States, something I suspect is far more complicated than this. But it, it wasn't removing months. itself from a union with the United States before uh, before that. Look, I want to move on uh, very quickly to this idea of um, of hardline Brexit groups like uh, the ERG, essentially calling, uh, like a little bit how you've just said, to keep up the pressure on the EU to try to re renegotiate uh, those, uh, the withdrawal agreement. As a Leave voter yourself, you're not a fan of uh, Theresa May's withdrawal agreement, I think we could say that, but right now, do you think it's the best option on the table? Well, as both sides say, it's the only option on the table at the moment. That doesn't mean to say that it can't be changed in the next, what, 58 days until we ostensibly leave. Look, I, I am not a hardliner. I, I believe that there will have to be compromises, but there have to be compromises on both sides. Up to now, 
Um, in my view, it's the British government that's compromised most. They've given away most of uh, the, the things that they wanted. So um, we, we will have to see the clock ticking down and see where we get to within the next 58 days. But I accept that there will have to be compromises. Um, you can't go into a negotiation just saying no. And that is what the European Commission is doing at the moment.